we would like now to reassemble the pickup to see if this coil works but there's straight away a problem which is that the uh, when we wound it the sides of the uh, former have sort of bowed outwards so they're convex and it's thicker at the edge and it will not go in this pole piece it's too thick um, you see it won't go in uh, so first thing we must do is unwind it and think of something else to one empty former and stage two. Here's a close-up of the, the sub-assembly which has got the two uh, pole extension pieces, the armature and the coil former all in place. You can see there the little uh, red rubber that's the suspension which doesn't appear to be in too bad a shape. The hole for the needle, the needle securing screw and then from the front view um, the top of the armature coming up between the uh, pole pieces um, and then you can also see of course the uh, the little the, the former which has gone in uh, flat uh, but we've got to get it that thin when it's got wire wound on it and of course unfortunately um, we won't get as much wire on so the DC resistance will be even lower so oh well press on press on uh, okay we've got uh, there's the former and I've got two tap washers which are pretty rigid and in the center of each I've got a piece of rubber sleeving which will help to sort of bush them out so we're just going to slip this onto the winding shaft okay we've now got a sandwich two rubber washers um, with the former in between and um, that's looking okay I've also running on one and a half volts now because it was a bit fast before so let's see what happens now. Okay, count down. Three, two, one, go. Actually, I'm not sure quite exactly. I'll have to stop it to see where the ends. Because the, these washers are black and the former's black, I could wind past the end of it. Um, I'm just going to check out to see how much of it's left. Yeah, this also forms quite a good jig for winding on. Oh, if I can just do this. For winding on the tape, wind it on in situ. Like that. So, what have we got? Okay, the coil, it's, it's worked. The coil is thinner and has gone into the pole pieces, but there are one or two turns spilled. But I'm going to uh, just carry on with this now we're progressing to uh, see um, how we get on. Well, this was the front of the assembly, so I'm going to put the, the armature back uh, through. And that's why it's got a square hole, because it lets the spade go through it. Uh, and then place it in between the get this rubber suspension the orange or brown bits uh, once it's gone in between it will go down like that then you can locate it like that uh, and then the top of the armature is will go uh, into this um, damping piece which is a piece of rubber which is actually not in bad condition I'm, I'm interchanging some of the parts from these heads and the, the rubber in the one is completely rock hard this isn't bad actually uh, we've temporarily jigged it up now comes a crucial thing I want to check for continuity and above all the resistance so I'll just get the crop clip Oops, on there and what have we got uh, same as before, uh, about 100 ohms, so um, okay, <laughs> let's uh, carry on. So here's the sub-assembly which we can now place back in its place in the uh, head moulding. 
Uh, now this is held in place by two uh, bolts. Uh, they're quite unusual bolts, these. They're uh, BA, British Association thread, but they're 5BA. And I don't know why it is, but normally you only get 2BA, 4BA, 6BA, 8BA. And the BAs, the odd numbered BAs, you don't encounter very often, but these are some. So I shall um, put them in and then make the final adjustments. Yes, and uh, a consequence of these 5BA being so rare, I don't have a 5BA nut driver, so I'm afraid we're having to... Um, I mean, I've got 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and even 10BA nut drivers and box spanners, but not the 3, 5, 7, 9. <laughs> Uh, so there it is, we've screwed them up. We can now put back the, the magnet, which is here, into its correct place, and you can hear it click too. Um, of course, that's another factor. We don't know how much mag how, how magnetic this, this is compared uh, with what it was in 1930. It's, it's fairly magnetic. <laughs> it's fairly magnetic. Uh, so, but we don't know. So put it back in. Now it's beginning to look like, it just rests there under its own uh, steam. Looks like a pickup again in now a bit. Um, there's a couple of little pads that hold that corner at the front of the, of the metal casing just under there. Okay, so now here comes the $64 question again. Um, how are we going to get these fine wires, uh, you can see them, uh, back out? Well, the answer is, uh, we'll use the original tag strip of this piece of Paxilin or some similar, which is just simply anchored here in this shaft. It's anchored round the tubing that's got these two ball catches in it, uh, and there's a tag on each side. So here is some, um, on the floor, is some single core wire, and we'll use those. And of course, as you know, we're going to solder one of these wires on now, and as you know, you must never take solder on the iron to the job, but uh, the trouble is we do only have three hands, uh, <laughs> we do only have two hands, so sometimes you have to uh, do that. Okay, that's all right, I think. Just um, tug it around a bit, that's all right. Now for the other one, uh, and then the other one, which will I forgot to tin that wire. And then melt that solder. And then with the pliers with any luck, I can do that. Oops. Uh, okay. Uh, now <coughs> comes the crucial, or the not so much crucial as the rather difficult bit of connecting the fine wires to these. Of course in the original there were no fine wires outside the coil, there were proper lead out wires which were fitted in there. How it was done I have no idea and I can hardly see this wire but... Uh, that's not very... I don't know. Uh, and then round the other side we'll have to bend this one down. Uh, bear with me. Um, but it's now, of course, you realise you need uh, brass tweezers and brass screwdrivers. You can't get any ordinary tweezers in there. Let me just have a look at that. Oh, it's done it. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, good, good. Uh, but you must understand, if anybody is still watching this, that... Uh, there's one wire, and I do have a brass paper knife, which we can do, and they are joined up. Uh, and, but, you know, this is what is technically known in the trade as a codge-up. Um, and I don't suppose, well, I don't know, it might work, it might work, let's carry on. So, uh, th here's the arm off the record deck. Um, it's held on by one pivot, uh, a screwed bush. Uh, so it means the arms are very easy to change. We'll, we'll come to that again later. Uh, and here is a uh, phono lead. So all we do is pop the end of that off uh, and we will thread it uh, along the arm like so. 
uh, and now proceed to connect this to our pickup. <clears throat> well, having done that, uh, we can um, take the arm, uh, get the cable down the arm, reintroduce the head uh, into the arm, and then, like so, um, head, arm, and pivot, and a lead uh, with a phono socket on the end, plug on the end. Okay, here is our arm mounted <clears throat> on the deck for trial, and what better record could we uh, play than the one we played before when we had the auxiliary arm? There is no greater love, Louis King Garcia and his swing band, uh, which is presumably from Bluebird, and um, so let's see. The moment of truth. Um, switch on the de oh, switch on the deck. And the phono lead comes from the end of the arm and goes by well, an extension uh, over here to an amplifier, uh, um, NAO, NAD amplifier, which is used for the computer audio. And you can't see them, but there are two uh, speakers here, little ones. Um, and I've plugged it into the tape play socket, which is an auxiliary input. And um, I've got the volume down. And let's just see. Needle talk to me. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> wow! <laughs> It did work after a fashion. Mind you, there's lots of problems left. I'm not going to work on them, but um, I've turned the volume on the amplifier down, but listen. There's an amazing amount of talk and chatter coming from the pickup, um, which is terrible. But that, of course, is because inside the rubbers are all uh, seized up. I won't have aligned it correctly. Um, and things like that. Yes, uh, we need to, uh, we would need to do it properly, but this was uh, never a restoration exercise, it was just a tinkering around sort of trial to see, you know, if the thing uh, would work, and, and yes it does, but it does need a lot more work doing on it, which uh, my attention span is not very long, I think I'll just lay it aside now. Um, the, the worst thing is still, I've mentioned it many times, the arm is too long, um, there's a lot of tracking error and I think actually as I showed you how easy it was to change those arms, just one little bush, I think that arm has been changed and uh, it's come from something else with a 12 inch turntable so the arm is like an inch longer um, and th those arms are not rare um, so I would be quite happy about sawing an inch off that, it's just a tube um, and then it would track properly but as I say um, I think I've had, I've, I've sort of about had it for now and also today is the 21st of December the, the uh, winter solstice the shortest day so in, and even though it's only half past four I don't normally drink before six or seven o'clock in the evening but I think a little drink a toast to you if there are any of you left still watching and uh, have a good festive season and a very prosperous 2011